Hello, lovely people. I was surprised at how many of you weren't as familiar with Decked Out as I expected, so I thought I'd make a short little video explaining how it works. Decked Out was built in Survival Minecraft by Tango Tech in Season 9 of Hermitcraft, and he does have a How to Play Decked Out video that will be linked in the description of each video in our little series. Also, if you're interested in redstone or game design, I highly recommend that you watch his Season 9. It was a fascinating process. And if you would like to play Decked Out, you can get the world download at hermitcraft.com, which will be linked in the description. But for those of you who want to stick around here and want to know how it works before watching my videos, this is the video for you. Decked Out is completely vanilla Minecraft in functionality, but utilizes custom textures to create different items for the game. There are several different items that you will see me interact with in the runs. As far as playing the games go, we start out by using a frozen shard to admit us into the game. It's just a retextured and renamed Iron Nugget. After setting spawn and emptying our inventory, we select the game difficulty, which determines how deep into the dungeon we go. The game runs and progresses based on a deck of cards. Each card has a different effect on the game, but first we need to understand the way the game operates. When we enter the dungeon, we are given a compass. It tells us what level we'll be going to, and nothing more. When we are on that level, then we can follow the compass to its lodestone drop-off location to collect the artifact for our run, and then we still need to get all the way back alive. Artifacts are based on the hermits and give us a specific number of frost embers, which is the currency we use to buy better cards. There are several functionalities happening in the dungeon while we are in here. First, if we are detected by a skulk sensor, which are randomized in each run, and it sets off a shrieker, we will accumulate clank for every other activation. Clank is a danger indicator, indicated by a heartbeat sound that you can hear throughout the runs. And once we are at max clank, which is the fastest heartbeat, evokers are exposed to send Vex after us. Clank is also gained when a stumble card is drawn, which you can hear announced across the dungeon with the other card draws, and we gain 3 clank after submitting our compass and receiving our artifact. The second thing happening in the dungeon while we are running is that hazards are accumulating. Different paths are being shut off so that the dungeon is dynamic and unpredictable. The longer we're in here, the more hazards go up. While in the dungeon, treasure is dropping. Crowns, coins, which you exchange for crowns, and keys. While crowns are nice, their use for us is limited, as most of the time hermits used them to buy extra frozen shards for runs. There are some interesting cards available in the crown shop as well. But keys are super important, as they allow you to unlock the lower levels. However, there's a limited amount of treasure that can drop on each floor in a run, so if you don't get a key, well, sucks to be you. Frost embers also drop in the dungeon, but they are a separate drop from treasure. Now with all that out of the way, we can look at our cards. There are a few different categories that get affected by our cards, and you can see most of them by looking at the common cards in the shop, which are always available, unlike common and rare cards, which come up randomly. We have cards that block our clank, which means we get more time before vex time. Then we get cards that block hazard, leaving more paths open for longer. Very handy when one exit is being blocked by a ravager. Then we get our treasure cards, which increase treasure drops, and frost ember cards, which, you guessed it, increase frost ember drops. As we get into higher level cards, our good things sometimes get bad things mixed in. We might get hazard applied to a card for high treasure drops, for example. There are some other things in higher cards that might help us on the way as well, such as cards that give run speed or regeneration. There are three card types, and you can see where they're notated on the front of the card. Our normal cards are always in our deck, if we want them to be, but we also get ethereal cards, which give extra perks, but are burned after they've been drawn from our deck. And then we get permanent cards, which are played immediately at the beginning of a run and or are for an effect that is applied throughout your run, for example for an item that gets dropped at the beginning of the dungeon. Permanent cards can also be ethereal for one-time use. You can hear the cards announced in the dungeon as they are drawn, along with other sounds that indicate when different effects from our cards are being used, for example these sounds that you hear when Clank is blocked. The cards ultimately affect how long we can survive in the dungeon, which affects how deep into it we can venture, which of course affects how good of an artifact we get, so everything comes full circle as we continue leveling up our gameplay. 
There is one thing that does not affect us in single player, but over here we have victory tomes for purchase with frost embers, which is the point system used for the competition among the hermits. The last piece of this game is the map dropped along with our compass. It is a real-time tracker of our various statistics in the dungeon. As it is a map, it does need to be loaded by another player, but as we play, you'll see it count off the four different statistics when the cards that affect them are called, then those squares slowly disappear as the effects are applied to the dungeon. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about Decked Out in order to track what's going on down in the dungeon. I'll see you there!